I think the MSLT2 study is a very important study, but I think it also is asking a different question. And uh, as Merrick alluded to here, is that when we find a sentinel lymph node, so the majority of patients only have one sentinel lymph node that has micrometastatic disease in it, and the tumor burden tends to be one millimeter or less, a very small amount of tumor burden. The question then becomes, traditionally, we have recommended that every patient that has a positive sentinel node should have a completion lymph node dissection. When that is being performed, we know that in the vast majority of patients, there are no other lymph nodes with melanoma in them. And that's where the MSLT2 study comes in. And the question being, do we need to perform a completion lymph node dissection in all those patients? And the MSLT2 study then randomizes patients to either have a completion lymph node dissection versus being followed with ultrasound. The hypothesis being that the five-year survival in those two patients, randomized patient groups, is the same. Now, the study just completed accrual, uh, so we don't know the answer for that, and it'll still be at least three to four years before we'll have answers from that. I think it's important then to recognize that currently the, uh, the standard of care for patients that does have micrometastatic disease in their lymph node basin is to undergo a completion lymph node dissection until we have more data from that. See, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, right, just go ahead. I'm in my practice, I find it difficult to go down the road of that discussion because it sentinel node and a completion lymph node dissection is so important in the ability to offer these patients some form of adjuvant therapy and trial. For us to move forward and find something in that space, we really do need to know what the risks of recurrence are. We really do need to do the completion lymph node dissection and adequately stratify in our trials going forward. Hopefully, those trials going forward not only will come up with an answer, but will find a biomarker, then, then we can come back and sort of do a third step MSLT to figure out how to move on from there. And I think it's also important to recognize, you asked the question about should we do a sentinel biopsy? If you look at the MSLT1 data, the patients that did have a positive sentinel lymph node undergoing that completion lymph node dissection immediately, versus just having a wide excision and being monitored, and then when they develop macroscopic disease, which close to 20% did, and then having a node dissection, the absolute difference in five-year survival for those patients is over 20%. The 10-year survival difference is also over 20%. I think, and that really, to me, there are very few treatments that we provide that can have such a vast difference in overall survival. So I do think that it is still is important for us to to recognize that the sentinel biopsy is extremely important for, prognos uh, for the prognosis for the patient, adequately staging the patient, and then providing additional therapies, adjuvant systemic therapies, uh, that may then decrease the risk of recurrence for the patient. Do you, do you mind if I make two more points before we go on? Is that, yeah, yeah. that okay? Please, please, Mary. So, so Jeff, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to overestimate the, the uh, information that we're going to receive from MSLT2 a little bit, because it's not really the same as the MSLT1 because removing the sentinel node could be therapeutic in itself, and that those node-positive patients may benefit completely just by removing the sentinel node, because just like in the MSLT1 trial where the incidence of node positivity was 20% to begin with, the incidence of additional positive nodes, and those are the only patients that can benefit by a completion dissection, that incidence is actually smaller than the original incidence of 20%. It's somewhere between 10 and 20%. And I'm not sure the, the study is really powered to look at survival differences in those two groups of patients. But be that as, it's, be that as it may, I think it's an important way to identify patients where we don't have to have as much surgery and we can minimize the morbidity. But the other point I wanted to make was, was that we seem to underestimate the value of regional control in the lymph node basin that a lymph node dissection or a formal lymphadenectomy that's performed for patients with grossly positive nodes, the risk of recurrence in that same nodal basin is pretty high. It's averaging around 21%, but can be as high as 50% for patients with multiple positive nodes, with extracapsular extension, or in the head and neck location. But the incidence of recurrence in that basin after a completion dissection for a microscopic nodal involvement, it's less than 5%. So we're improving their, their quality of life and their outcomes from a regional control perspective, not just from a survival perspective. <coughs> to that, uh, note, uh, to yeah. that note, actually, <coughs> Jeff, in the MSLT1 data, there was a sub-analysis looking at the morbidity of performing a completion lymph node dissection immediately with micrometastatic disease in the lymph node basin versus with macrometastatic disease. And there was a substantial increase in lymphedema and other morbidity doing it 
when there's more disease in the lymph node basin. Yeah. I'll just throw out a little wrinkle for you. I'm, I'm not 100% sure taking out the regional nodes, the completion lymph node dissection will ultimately be good for the patient. There may be a reason to leave those nodes in because there's, they, they, they may be important in, in an immune response against cancer that may be important in preventing relapse, but that's the topic for, for another, uh, another time. Um, let me just ask a couple of other questions. Uh, um, just in terms of an in-transit metastasis, Robert, if you could address, would you do a sentinel node in a patient who has an in-transit, uh, a single in-transit uh, met? That's a very good question. So the single in-transit metastasis, we do know that the risk of having, if on clinical examination we do not feel any evidence of palpable nodal involvement, we do know that the risk of having microscopic nodal involvement in those patients is 40 percent or even greater. So at our institution, yes, we would do that. Uh, it becomes challenging when we have patients that have multiple in-transit recurrences. The question then becomes where do we inject that, um, the, uh, so, uh, the radioactive colloid, that we, the sulfur colloid that we use. So we do it less often if we have large amounts of in-transit, but in single in-transit, yes, I would do it.